Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, before we get to our featured talk, I, I want to give you some background on LabSite and our products. LabSite invented the use of focused sound energy uh, to transfer liquids and began shipping uh, our flagship product, the Echo Liquid Handler, in 2004. Uh, initially, the Echo was used by large pharmaceutical companies for high-throughput screening and sample management. But over time, uh, more areas of research uh, became de dependent on echo liquid handlers for high-performance uh, liquid handling and, and transfer of a wide range of fluid types, uh, sample types, and, and reagents. Also, over time, uh, we've developed uh, complementary product lines to really help implement the ECHO into a number of different workflows. Uh, we have a, a robotic uh, integration platform we call the Access Workstation, and this used to integrate the ECHO liquid handler with a variety of devices and to provide uh, walk-away fully automated processing uh, using the ECHO system. We also provide um, and offer pre-qualified uh, ECHO source plates, and these plates are tested uh, to make sure that every transfer of fluid uh, from the ECHO liquid handler is highly accurate and precise. We also have a line of uh, software products, a suite of ECHO software applications, and these software applications are tailored for uh, specific laboratory workflows, and they provide a graphical interface to set up protocols for the ECHO and also simulate and kind of troubleshoot protocols before you actually run them on the ECHO system. We offer two models of the ECHO liquid handler. Our 5 to 5 model transfers fluids in increments of 25 nanoliters, and our 550 and 555 models transfer in increments of 2.5 nanoliters. We initially produced the 550 and 555 systems to target high throughput screening where our users wanted to transfer as little compound as possible into their assays and screens and really conserve their compound libraries. Uh, however, you know, as I mentioned, the ECHO spread into uh, a lot of other research areas. And in some of those biology labs and, and, and core labs, we realized that it wasn't um, miniaturization that uh, our users were after, right? They just wanted that high uh, accuracy and precision that they, that they could get from an echo system. And there, when they were working with larger volumes, they found that two and a half nanoliter increment to be um, too small. It took too long to build up the larger volumes that they were looking for. So we developed the ECHO 5 to 5 liquid handler with a 25 nanoliter droplet. So it's 10 times uh, larger uh, increment that you can use with that system. And it builds those larger um, transfer volumes much faster. And so this next slide kind of shows the technology inside the ECHO. Um, at the bottom of the slide, you can kind of see a, an acoustic transducer. Now this transducer emits sound energy uh, through the bottom of the microplate well and up to the meniscus of the fluid. Uh, and that bottom plate well, if it's damaged or has some distortion, it could affect the transfer. And that's why it's very important and, and we recommend using our um, pre-qualified source plates to avoid that. Nonetheless, that sound energy, if it passes through the bottom and goes up to the meniscus, it's, it's focused at the meniscus and it starts to uh, create enough energy there to actually eject a droplet of liquid upward uh, in, into an inverted destination plate. So that drop travels up. Um, because we're controlling the power uh, that, that's being applied to the meniscus, that drop is consistent, drop after drop, and the drops come out very fast, uh, up to 500 droplets per second. Uh, so you can build up large transfer volumes very quickly. And, you know, a lot of people look at the inverted destination plate and worry about fluid slipping out or, or leaking. And that, because of the capillary forces within the well, that doesn't happen. And again, ECHOs have been used for a variety of reagents and a, and a variety of applications, and there hasn't been any uh, dripping issues. What's really nice about uh, the technology as well, that transducer can move from well to well. 
and there's no use of any kind of tip. Uh, so you can quickly go transfer fluid from one well and move to the next well without doing any tip changing or any kind of tip washing or anything like that. Also, because no tips are used, um, there's no contact with the fluid at all. It's completely non-contact. And there's no risk of the fluid sticking to the tip and get, getting carried over from one well to another. So you don't have to worry about things like sample carryover, cross-contamination. And also, I mean, you, you get to save costs on tips as well. But we also have a very cool technology uh, in, inside the ECHO called dynamic fluid analysis, um, or DFA as we call it in, in a lot. Um, with this, uh, we're using sound to profile the well. So in, in the slide before I talked about, you know, building up energy at the meniscus and ejecting a droplet. This we use a slightly lower power so we don't eject a droplet, but we, we can kind of send sound waves up and as they bounce off the meniscus, uh, collect information from them. And so with this, we can uh, see where the meniscus is so we can tell the overall height of fluid in a well and we can um, check the speed of sound and understand, you know, how viscous the fluid is. And this allows us to adjust on the fly, right? If you go from uh, one fluid type to another and the viscosity changes, uh, the echo can actually sense that and in milliseconds adjust power to ensure that you get your two and a half or 25 nanoliter droplet. And what's really nice about that is if you're working with uh, fluids that can hydrate or evaporate, can change while you're transferring, uh, across a plate, um, the echo is adjusting with every transfer as it goes to, again, assure that those droplets are the appropriate uh, volume that, that you want. And again, getting uh, to very highly precise, highly reliable uh, liquid transfer. And I should mention that the echo, again, has been used across a number of different fluid types, right? So transferring cell lysates, uh, you know, DNA, RNA, different types of assay reagents, and of course, uh, you know, DMSO samples. So this example uh, is, is kind of an example of what's done in synthetic biology uh, for DNA assembly. Uh, so you can see the microplate on the left has a number of different colored rows. Those rep can represent different oligos that you'd want to pool into an assembly reaction or you know, a combination of oligos and the actual assembly reagents. And the echo can transfer from any one of those wells at any time uh, and pool them into a, into a plate. And again, because there's no uh, changing of tips or washing of tips, that pooling happens very quickly. Uh, and the, the instant feedback we get from a lot of our um, users, especially working in the synthetic biology space, is that the system uh, saves them so much time immediately. Uh, yeah, and that's in addition to any miniaturization and cost savings uh, from miniaturization. This next slide kind of highlights that uh, in, in a kind of a simplified infographic, right? Uh, the, the system at the top is to represent kind of a, a tip-based uh, liquid handling system or traditional uh, liquid handling system, and then the bottom uh, section is the echo liquid handler. And if you look at just the assembly portion, you're already saving uh, around nine hours. Now, this is going to vary lab to lab, but, you know, assume you're cranking through numbers of assembly reactions, not having to change all those tips and, and change uh, your pipetting technique every, every time you transfer can really save a lot of time. And additionally, a lot of uh, groups, once they've assembled their genes, uh, they'll go through a QC steps, sometimes uh, using uh, sequencing, uh, next generation sequencing. And there, you typically build your sequencing libraries and then pool those libraries and normalize them. And with the ECHO system, because you can transfer low volumes of high concentration and larger volumes of low concentration, all without changing tips or doing any kind of dilutions, uh, you really save a lot of time. You can quickly pool and normalize in the, in the same step. And you combine those two to get together, and we, you know, we have users who are saving around 15 hours uh, in that whole process from just those two steps. Also, the ECHO can be used in a lot of other steps as well, right? So if you look at functional testing, you can use the ECHO there. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at transfection, the ECHO can be used there. 
So really, the ECHO can provide a benefit across the entire uh, set of workflows that are, that are typically used in synthetic biology. And as I mentioned, miniaturization is also another uh, big benefit. And, you know, we've kind of worked with lots of different research areas over the years and kind of collected these examples of where our users have been able to uh, take standard methods and reduce the volumes, right? If you look at uh, qPCR, PCR, they've had a six-fold reduction. Uh, we've, had, we've had users go um, to a hundred-fold reduction for next-gen library, and these are, you know, published results that, that uh, we, we can circulate and, and show. And as you can see, it's, it has a significant impact, right? You're saving a lot of cost by simply uh, implementing the ECHO, in addition to benefits of speed and, um, you know, higher precision, higher accuracy from your liquid handling. And as I mentioned, you're not using tips to do this, right? So there's no, con no um, contact with the fluid. There's no cross-contamination. So that's a, hopefully a good overview. Um, I'd like to turn it back to Lynn. And again, thank you all. Thank you.